TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu reiterates that Jerusalem cannot afford to leave Hamas in any functioning capacity in the Gaza Strip. The United States rejects the United Nations Human Rights Council's unsubstantiated claims that Israel is somehow deliberately using hunger as a method of war. Qatar acknowledges that talks to try and reach a hostage release deal are still ongoing. Israel cannot leave the Islamist Hamas even partially alive, and despite politically motivated efforts by international actors to try and avert expanding the ground offensive of the IDF into Rafah, the internationally designated terror group Hamas cannot be eradicated absent a ground incursion. Speaking at the start of a Parliamentary Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee session, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu reiterated Jerusalem's unyielding resolve to achieve victory. We are in a dual campaign, a military campaign and a diplomatic campaign. Of course, they are interconnected. The diplomatic fight gives us the time and the resources to reach the full results of the war. We have been fighting for over five months. This is a record in the history of Israel's wars, except for the War of Independence. We are, of course, under growing international pressure, which we are rejecting in order to achieve the goals of the war. The goals of the war are, to be succinct, the destruction or elimination of Hamas's military and governing capabilities, the release of all of our hostages, and ensuring that Gaza never again constitutes a threat to Israel. In order to do this, we need to complete the military elimination of Hamas. There is no alternative to this. We cannot go around it, neither can we say, we will destroy 80% of Hamas and leave 20%, because from that 20%, they will reorganize and take over the Strip again and, of course, constitute a new threat to Israel. And of course, this will be a victory for the greater axis that threatens us, the Iranian axis. Therefore, we are determined to complete the elimination of Hamas. This demands the elimination of the remaining battalions in Rafah and, of course, the 1.5 battalions in the central camps. We are determined to do this. The Israeli premier went on to stress that while an Israeli delegation will travel to Washington to debate with their American counterparts on the path forward, Jerusalem remains determined to eliminate the remaining Hamas battalions in the southern Gazan border town of Rafah. We have a debate that I will put on the table, and we all know it. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan also said this yesterday. We have a debate with the Americans over the need to enter Rafah, not over the need to eliminate Hamas, but the need to enter Rafah. We see no way to eliminate Hamas militarily without destroying these remaining battalions. We are determined to do this. Out of respect for the president, we agreed on a way in which they can present us with their ideas, especially on the humanitarian side, of course. We fully share this desire to facilitate an orderly exit of the population and the providing of humanitarian aid to the civilian population. We have been doing this since the beginning of the war. However, I made it as clear as possible to the president that we are determined to complete the elimination of these battalions in Rafa, and there is no way to do this without a ground incursion. It is important to highlight that while the United States does not have an alternative plan to the military solution vis-à-vis -vis the Islamist Hamas in the town of Rafah, U.S. Deputy State Department spokesman Vidon Patel illustrated the eagerness in which the Biden administration seeks to avoid an IDF ground offensive. 
it should come as no surprise that uh, when it comes to this, we are just um, squarely in uh, a different place and have a different viewpoint than our Israeli partners. You saw National Security Advisor Sullivan speak about this a little bit yesterday. Um, but I will also note that in this very same call, um, President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed to have their teams meet uh, for them to meet soon um, here in Washington to exchange views and discuss alternative approaches um, that would target the key elements of Hamas, um, help secure the Egypt-Gaza border, and uh, do so without a major ground operation in Rafa. We continue to feel quite strongly that uh, such an operation in Rafa, where there are more than a million people um, seeking refuge, a region that continues to be a key conduit for the entrance of humanitarian aid, that doing something like that without a credible and clear plan something that uh, without a plan that also doesn't address for the various humanitarian pieces um, would be a disaster and we hope that uh, uh, through this uh, mechanism um, our, our officials will be able to discuss some of these issues in greater detail and uh, find a path forward well seemingly eager to avert Israel's expanded military operation into the town of Rafah the Biden administration has rejected unfounded claims that were voiced by the United Nations High Representatives for Human Rights, Volker Turk, who blatantly accused Israel, absent any factual basis, of using starvation as a method of war. Let me just say that is not something that uh, we have observed or witnessed, but uh, we continue to be deeply concerned about the report that indi that's indicating that famine is imminent in Gaza. Uh, this report makes clear um, that uh, the amount of aid reaching uh, the people in Gaza is uh, insufficient um, and that more needs to be done. We need to redouble our efforts to ensure that aid can get to the places that it needs to go. Both, uh, you heard me talk about this a little bit yesterday via land routes, uh, via airdrops, and uh, this um, forthcoming maritime corridor as well. It is important to know that the referred to report by Patel, which was funded by EU, UK, US and Canadian taxpayers, based its research among other more reputable institutions on extremely biased organizations such as UNRWA, which has employed Islamist terror operatives affiliated to Hamas and other internationally designated Palestinian terror organizations who had proactively participated in the atrocities committed on October 7th. Moreover, the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC, was one of those organizations that convinced the Biden administration to initially remove the Iranian proxy Ansar Allah, which is dominated by the Houthi tribe, from the State Department's foreign terrorist organizations list, due to claims of far-reaching consequences to food insecurity in Yemen. And while the organization's projection based much of its research on analysis conducted in December of 2023, the IDF's coordinator of government activities in the territories, which effectively facilitates the transfer of humanitarian aid daily into the Gaza Strip, provided substantiated proof that Israel does not restrict the flow of aid into the Gaza Strip but rather, the UN organizations are failing to keep up with distribution into the enclave. I'm saying that there are difficulties, but I'm saying that there, it is doable because every day they are distributing 170 trucks without violence, without getting looted. So it's doable. There are challenges, and the main challenge is that we are checking more than what they can collect and distribute. That's the gap. Every day, 250 trucks are scanned here in Camp Shalom and sent to the Palestinian side, and you saw it in your own eyes. And on the Palestinian side, 300 trucks are waiting to be collected and distributed. That's the main gap. Asked further whether cited security concerns by UN organizations are in fact legitimate, Colonel Reserve Goren brushed these off as sheer excuses. When you want to find an excuse, you will find an excuse for the failure of your logistical humanitarian operation. For a fact, there are other war zones all over the world that the UN delivered in Afghanistan, in Iraq, now in Ukraine. They need to adjust themselves here. See? Also, there are techniques and methods to provide security, local security, families, clans, international security companies, 
we will we we are ready to hear from their the solutions or their proposals and we will uh, do it with them turning to doha where qatar's foreign ministry spokesman majid al ansari confirmed that while Mossad director david barnia had left the country an israeli delegation remained to persist with negotiations to try and find an outline for a possible hostage release deal uh, he has left doha according to the information i uh, I have, and the technical teams are still uh, meeting here in, uh, uh, in Doha. First of all, I don't think we are at a moment now where we can say that we are close to, uh, to a deal. We are, as I said, we are cautiously optimistic because the talks have resumed, and that is a good thing, and we hope that that uh, continues, and we hope to build upon uh, that in the coming uh, days, but it's still too early uh, to, uh, to announce any, uh, any successes, so uh, we remain uh, as I said, we remain hopeful. So we are at a point now where we are expecting that a counter proposal would be uh, presented to, uh, to Hamas. But this is not the final step in, uh, in the process, obviously, until we reach a, a place where both sides can agree on, uh, on language of, uh, of an agreement. These you know, steps back and forth will, uh, will continue. We've talked uh, very clearly about phases in, uh, in the pause. The first pause is uh, supposed to be a humanitarian pause if we uh, get an agreement on it that will focus on uh, as, you know, stopping the hostilities, uh, making sure that we have an exchange of uh, prisoners and, uh, and hostages, getting the civilians out, and a lot of the details that you have already uh, covered. Uh, we are hoping that that would build momentum towards a second phase where you will have uh, probably some sorts of, uh, of ceasefire. But right now, the focus is on a humanitarian path to take place in the first phase. It is important to stress that while Qatar brokers negotiations between Israel and the Islamist Hamas under the umbrella of the United States, Doha continues to host the leadership of the Palestinian terrorist organization Hamas in its capital. In tandem, the Qataris are working tirelessly on a number of fronts to spout disinformation by blatantly demonizing Israel's military campaign in the Gaza Strip on the one hand and on the other the United States for supporting Israel with the apparent intention of influencing U.S. public opinion via its outlet Al Jazeera to try and pressure the Biden administration to prevent Jerusalem from achieving its war objectives. Among others, Doha is trying to convince the West that a ground offensive in Rafah, which is necessary to deal Hamas a decisive blow, would entail inevitable atrocities. We uh, have cautioned and we will still caution that any attack on, uh, on Rafah will make the humanitarian situation considerably uh, worse and will result in atrocities that uh, have not been seen before uh, in this terrible uh, crisis with the number of unbelievable atrocities that have taken uh, place. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based non-profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, we would appreciate it if you'd consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach. God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.